Civil engineering is all about city building. And as a structural engineer, I grew up loving city simulations such as SimCity, and these games have come a long way. But there's a new game on the block, and it combines an animal that's considered to be the engineer of the animal kingdom, the cute beaver. And this is Timberborn. Oh, don't even get me started on the humans. They had it all. Fresh air, clean water. Now they're just a faint memory, and it's all of their own making. But we, my friend, are here to stay, for we are beavers, and we put our trust in timber. This one is a pure city building simulation, so you have no enemies to fight. All you need to do is grow your civilization. Water is one of the primary resources that you need to collect, and you collect this through the latest log pumping technology. So you build your water pumps, and the beavers work in there, pumping the water out and collecting it in storage containers. And of course, as a beaver, the other primary resource for construction is trees. So you do this through building lumberjacks, but the beavers then go out cutting down the trees. Of course, they do not need any equipment, as what beaver needs any equipment to cut down any tree? And what's the one thing that beavers do best? They build dams. And this is one of the key mechanics in this game. So the construction of dams is critical to any civilization. And with the construction of dams, you're able to redirect the water through different paths. As we can see here, we have a dam which has a levee on it. As we raise the levee up, we can see we're stopping the flow of water down this primary path. But if we zoom over here, and we can see that we've redirected the water down this other direction. So as it speeds up, you can see the green areas of the fertile land expanding as the water flow flows through the new direction. Now let's quickly jump into the game and see some of the mechanics in action. This is just the starting zone. We've used the first beaver faction we get access to, which is the Folktales. And if you're on my patrons, don't forget to look out for your name as I've named the beavers after you. And obviously the first resource we need to start collecting is timber so we can start building buildings from the logs they collect. We do this through building a series of lumberjacks. So as you can see, I'm trying to locate them such that they're access to all the trees in this area. Then also we need to connect it up with a road from our headquarters. And we also need somewhere to store it. So we do this through building the log pile. So you see the little sign on top of the head? That actually means that we've actually forgotten to mark any trees for cutting down. So we just quickly mark the trees for cutting down. Now they're better to find some of the resources so that we can build additional buildings. Next thing also we need to get is some water so we don't keep our beavers thirsty. So we build this through building a series of these water pumps that we discussed earlier. But as you can see, look, I've actually forgotten to connect it up with a road. But I can't access it until I've actually built a road path there. Then after I built the road path there, we can assign workers to it and start pumping the water to keep our beavers from dying of thirst. We also need somewhere to store our water as well, so we build a series of water tanks. And we need to make sure that we've got enough of these, especially during the dry season. If you want to give hope to these little beavers, don't forget to click the like button. Now let's go and collect some berries to get some food for the beavers to eat. And I'm trying to locate it as far away as possible from any of the fertile land that's in green. Then we also need to then start collecting some food, so building some farms. And we'll also plant some carrots there, which is the first of the food products that gives us additional nutrition, similar to what the berries are that we're collecting. In addition to this, we obviously need somewhere to store the food, so we need to build a storage yard. Let's speed it up a little bit and get the beavers going. And look again, they're getting another night of sleeping out at the rough. We look at this other feature as well. As we're zooming in here, you can see that we've got a area here that's currently blocking water from getting into this area. If we build a path there and mark it for demolition, we can get it removed. And we can see the area as the water starts to flow in and expand out that we can grow fertile land on. And as we were saying, beavers are all about building dams. And this is really key to the game. So we're going to build a levee here that will allow us to keep some of the water in there for the upcoming dry season. As you can see here, we need to do some research to get additional things. So we can see we've got some suspension bridges and other things that we'll need to research later. As what engineer doesn't love a good suspension bridge. Now let's build some housing to help to get our beavers out of the cold. This will also help with our life expectancies. So... One key tip with the farms as well, 
is that you've got a priority between planting and harvesting. If you set it to planting, it means after they harvest the wheat or the corn or whatever they're growing, they'll go back and plant it back. So it's re constantly replenishing. If you keep it to harvesting, they'll just keep harvesting until there's nothing left and then go and plant after. Now we, big logs being the key aspect, let's go and build some additional lumberjacks up here. We're watching them build the levee. We can see the water starting to flow around the levee. It actually speeds up as the river's being blocked. There's actually some quite good mechanics here. So as we can see, the water's starting to really speed up now. So the water mechanics is quite complex in this game. As you can see, as we build the road across, we've got to make sure safety for all, and they're building a little handrails across our levee. Another key thing, there's different types of trees as well, and they produce different amounts of the resource. Obviously, the birch tree, you can get only one log, and the pine tree, you can actually get two. Now, we have additional tiers of resources, so we can process the timber into planks, which is like a tier two resource. And we do this through building the sawmill. If we look at the sawmill, it actually needs a power and electricity to power it. And you can do this through a water wheel that we can build into the river. Obviously here, here's one of the key mechanics. As you can see, we've got a countdown timer here towards the dry cycle. So we'll watch the river all dry up. This is where we need to make sure they've got enough resources to make it through the dry season as we potentially be limited on how much food we can grow and how much water we can gather. We're watching here, we can see the river is drying up as it's flowing away. Everything behind it is becoming less fertile. Trees are drying out. So the land is becoming barren during this period. But as we can see, look, we've got a levee there. So it's holding back some of the water, allowing us to store it for longer and keep some of the area fertile. But now as it is dry season, we need to get additional power to our sawmill as the water wheel will, won't be able to power it as there's no flowing water. And we can do this through building this little hamster wheel looking thing. Now I'd just like to thank Anton who's jumped onto the sawmill to help power it. Now the wet season is over. We can see the land is becoming fertile behind it. As the water starts to flow back through the map, you can see all the trees are starting to ground back up and the gr grass is becoming fertile again where it can replant crops. This is really unique to this game as one of the biggest features is obviously making it a number of tactics and strategies that you can use to ensure that you, you're meeting and beating those dry seasons. And obviously using the power of the beaver, which is really those dams and levees. Another thing as well is beaver is all about building on top of each other and stacking it. As we can see now through the research, we can build some stairs, which allow us to go up another level. And if we watch closely, we're actually able to build structures on top of structures. So we can see here, we're now stacking buildings on top of each other, being more efficient with space. And of course, when we build the roads, we've got to make sure that safety first, and so we've got to make sure we've got those handrails. Why isn't it water wheel spinning? It should be spinning now. Uh, I think it's the flow of water. As you can see, we're sort of the flow of water sort of parallel or not perpendicular. So let's try the water wheel located here. Hopefully they'll be able to pick up the flow of the water. But with the dry season now coming in, there's obviously no point building that water wheel. If you want to see another episode on this, don't forget to comment below. I typically make content around structural engineering and the engineering sector. So if you're interested in supporting this type of content, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. Much like these many Patreons I've got listed over here. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.